everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. I did take the summer off to stop and smell the roses, but I am back flipping now. If you want to take a look at one of my many adventures, please click here and watch this video. I had a beautiful trip with my sister, so you can take a look at that. But now we are back to work. It's flipping time, and I did go ahead and do this piece that I'm going to show you today. I don't know why, but I really love this piece. It was a commission piece, so I did have a few parameters that I had to work within, but I do think I was still able to give it some of my own flair, and I love the outcome. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section. Please watch the entire video and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching, and let's hop right on into the flip. Here's the piece that we are going to be flipping. As you can see, it's really old and kind of clunky, heavy looking. So we're going to see what we can do about that. A lot of us flippers spend a lot of time on Marketplace and those such apps to try to find pieces that we can flip and sell. However, I have started offering a service where my clients can go and find their own piece and then I will go and pick it up for them because I have a truck and many other people do not. So that is an extra little something that I can give to my clients. They can find what they love. I can save my time. I can go and pick up and we can both be happy. So as you can see, this one has just a small bit of damage. So here is what this side is looking, kind of a couple of scuffs and scratches that we will have to address. But overall, this piece is not in too bad of condition. Inside the drawers is beautiful, as you can see. Very little damage there. Those will clean up very nicely. And in this one, there are even some little compartments, so I thought that was a nice touch. The drawers are sliding smoothly. The inside is very clean down here at the bottom as well, and the wood is very beautiful on the inside. So, so far, this piece has pretty good bones and I'm excited to see what we can do with it. When my client initially showed me this piece, I thought the hardware were unique, but I just really thought the doors and the hardware made the piece look a lot clunkier than it should look. And we wanted to go for something a lot more modern, so that was our goal on this piece. But as you can see, it has pretty good bones and the initial condition is very good. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the hardware from both drawers and then I am going to go in with some wood filler. I am trying a new wood filler this time which is the Gorilla Wood Filler. I love their glue so I decided to try their wood filler. It's really grainy and I really like it more than the one that I previously used. The finish on this piece is very shiny so I'm going to be knocking that back with this 220 grit sandpaper. I'm going to go ahead and start my scuff sanding. While I was doing this I realized that it might be kind of cute to go ahead and sand that top strip where I'm at now down to the raw wood so I did that with 220 grit sandpaper as well. I left this in because I hope you can learn from it. As I was sanding because I did not clean it first some particle that was on the top coat got stuck in my sandpaper and made those terrible swirl marks. So I'm just going to go in with a new sheet of sandpaper and just keep on sanding. But I wanted to leave that clip in in case that ever happens to one of you guys who are here to learn. You can just always start fresh and get back to sanding or you can clean your piece thoroughly before you start. Now I'm going in with my wood filler and I'm just going to get into some of those areas that I showed you that were scratched up before. This piece was in pretty good condition so there are not too many scratched up areas. However, I do want to make it perfect for my client so I'm going to go in with this filler. As I said, I really like this more than the dap wood filler that I previously used because this is grainy and it seems like it's much thicker and it's easier to push into the scratched areas and also it comes with sandpaper and a scraper. Whenever I'm using wood filler on corners I always try to make sure I mold the filler into the shape of the corner. Whenever I use wood filler I always make sure to apply more than I actually need just so that I have that additional leeway when I go back in with my sander. And as you can see here sometimes I use a scraper and sometimes I just use my fingernails and my fingers. 
And just a little sidebar, while we're on the topic of my nails, I do get quite a few comments about people asking how I keep my nails so nice doing this kind of work and admiring my nails. Thank you so much. I do them myself. And that is my last bit of self-care I'm able to hang on to while doing this line of work. While I'm waiting for that wood filler to dry, I'm going to go ahead and hand sand some of these more delicate areas that I would not be able to reach with my big orbital sander. So not all of your favorite flippers have to surf prep, although I would really love one. And it would have really made light work of this job. Some of you guys don't have them either, so I'm happy to go this route with you because this is the route that I'm currently taking as well. I am going to use my orbital sander for the flat part, but I did use a, just a regular sanding block for a lot of the intricate details. While I was sanding this drawer, I realized that it was coming apart, so I went ahead and broke it all the way apart so that I could use some of my Gorilla Glue, which is my favorite wood glue currently. And I wanted to go ahead and just reinforce the whole drawer with this glue. I do use a skewer to get into the little small tight areas. This is just a regular barbecue skewer. Y'all, this is not a fancy production. We use what we have around here. I use my finger and a, and a skewer that I had left over from when I made shish kebabs. And I go ahead and use that to push glue into all the crevices. And then I am going to push the drawer back together. I did the same thing on the dovetails. I just add a little bit of glue with my skewer and I stuck everything back together. At this point, there is really no excuse and I really don't know why, but I do not have the proper clamps to secure this. So I am going to be using my old trick that I always do, which is to put frog tape around the side and across the top. And normally that does the trick as long as you pull it taut and make sure that it's on there tight enough, it does just fine. Now that my drawers are prepped, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to sanding down all that wood filler that I just put on. And as you can see, I got a little bit too happy. So I have to do this area twice. But while I'm waiting for that to dry the second time, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the side area that I also patched. As you can see, I'm just removing all the excess wood filler until I get down to a smooth layer. And on the edge, I am just going to make sure that I reinforce that corner shape. I'm going to go ahead and finish off my hand sanding. Then I'm going to use some cleaning vinegar and some water and clean off the door fronts. After I got very tired of hand sanding, I realized that I just don't have the necessary tools to sand something with as much detail as these doors have. So I went ahead in with some liquid sandpaper. I don't know why this was a thought in my mind or where I saw this from, but I'm so glad it popped into my head at the last minute. I ran to the store to get this because I just could not see hand sanding all of these details. This was my first time ever using this. It was really simple to use and it worked pretty well. On the left is an area where I did apply the liquid sandpaper and on the right is an area where I have not and you can see the difference in sheen. Now I'm going back in with my cleaning vinegar, just a little bit of Dawn and some water and I'm gonna give this piece a thorough cleaning. I'm talking all the sanding dust, all, everything on the inside. I'm going to hit the doors again. I'm going to make sure that every surface on this dresser is very clean. Thank God that the liquid sandpaper did not take too long to do because I just decided that the piece still looked too heavy and I really wanted to make it look modern. So I talked it over with my client and I got the okay to just remove two of the drawers and do open storage on one side. So I told her that I thought that would make it look a lot less clunky and we both agreed. I'm going in with my home right sprayer and I'm going to be doing two coats of the Ben Shellac based primer. If you're curious about my sprayer, it is the home right sprayer from Amazon. It's very inexpensive and I think it does a beautiful job. I've gotten really comfortable using it to apply the Ben primer as well as polycrylic, but I have not gotten the hang of using it to apply paint. And personally, I like to paint by hand with my brush anyway. So I haven't found really the need to keep messing with it to get the settings for paint. But I do use it every time I'm going to flip now for the primer as well as the top coat. I did have to go back and put some wood filler in the area where I removed the doors from. But other than that, here is what two coats of this primer looks like. 
Honestly, I don't know why I did not tint this primer as I already knew from the beginning that I would be doing a dark color on the finish. But I've done this before with white primer and a really dark color and it turned out just fine. So I'm not too worried, but that is an option if you ever wanted to try that. Next, I'm going in with my Old Faithful 045 Klingon brush, my Coal Black Fusion paint, and my Water Mister. And I'm just going to go ahead and start painting this. The first coat doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be opaque. It will be very splotchy and transparent looking. And I will show you what my first coat looks like when it is complete. In my experience, Fusion is not a one coat paint. You will always need to do at least two coats if you want a real true representation of the color that you've chosen. So here you can see a lot of the primer through it. You can see that it looks really rough, but I like to show this because I know that it can be scary if you're new to this paint or new to painting furniture in general. In the front of my piece, there's a white strip and that is painter's tape. After doing one and a half more coats of paint, I did use this stain on that front strip that I just mentioned and I did two coats to get this look. I will be using this same stain on the handles that I'm making. I've just got a dowel and I'm going to cut into four pieces. I'm going to put two coats of this stain on as you can see here. I'm just using a lint free cloth and allowing those to dry for a little bit before I apply them. In order to attach my pulls, I'm going to be using pieces from this adjustable hardware that I got from Lowe's. And what I'm going to do is pull out their rod and just put my dowel in place of it and it worked beautifully. Another reason why this piece looked pretty heavy and clunky to me was because it was a little bit too low so I wanted to raise it up. I did have to add two pieces of wood at every corner just to make sure that my legs were securely fastened. I wanted all four corners of my hardware to have something to screw into. My client did find these legs on Amazon just in case you're interested in searching for them. I'm using that same poly stain that I showed you earlier and I am just going to be applying two coats to each of the four feet. So as a refresher, here is where we started out with this piece. And here is the final finished look. So what do you think of this project? Leave me a comment and let me know how you think it turned out. I really like it. I think it turned out better than myself or my client had imagined. And I'm pretty proud of this piece. I know some of you aren't comfortable with leaving comments, but if you think I did a good job, please at least hit the thumbs up and the subscribe buttons on your way off the video. If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen or in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching.